Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to Midday Prayer. My name's Chris and I'm a member of St John's Scottish Episcopal Church in the centre of Edinburgh. Thank you for joining me today. Today we remember Adevik of Brabant in the Netherlands. Little is known about the life of Adevik apart from her influential spiritual writings. She was almost certainly a Begin, a member of a group of women who lived in a quasi-monastic community but did not take formal vows. Instead, they pledged to be bound by the traditional vows of poverty, chastity and obedience, only as long as they lived in the community. The Begin movement was particularly attractive to women who could not afford the often substantial dowry that was required by many monasteries. But the level of Adavik's education suggests that she was probably from a wealthy background. Her writings show that in addition to her native language of Dutch, she was conversant with theological writings in both Latin and French, and also <clears throat> with French courtly poetry. Adevik is considered one of the creators of Dutch lyrical poetry, which includes compositions in which she co-opts the French trouvère form to extol the love between the speaker and God, rather than worldly love. She also wrote poems in couplets on religious themes, as well as prose letters and a book of visions in which she engages Christ in dialogue. In a number of her works, she explicitly genders love as female. Of great love, in high thought, I long to think day and night. She, with her terrible might, so opens my heart, I must surrender all to her. And also, sweet as love's nature is, where can she come by the strange hatred with which she continually pursues me and that pierces the depths of my heart with storm? I wander in darkness, without clarity, without liberating consolation and in strange fear. While her works were widely known in the 14th and 15th centuries, by the time of the 16th century, she had largely been forgotten. However, recent scholarly research has uncovered the profound impact that her writings had on better known male mystics, such as Meister Eckhart and John of Riesbrook. This has resulted in increased attention and appreciation for the originality and import of her works. During Eastertide, we commence our midday prayers by praying with the words from the canticle Pascha Nostrum, Christ our Passover. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of, leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, 
by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Let us pray with words from Psalm 119. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. With open mouth I pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me as is your custom towards those who love your name. Keep my steps steady according to your promise and never let iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from human oppression that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because your law is not kept. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high just as there were many who were astonished at him so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals so he shall startle many nations kings shall shut their mouths because of him for that which had not been told them they shall see and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray and have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, though he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge 
the righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. And now the canticle Dignus Es from Revelation. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendour forever and forevermore. Our second reading is from John. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. And now the canticle Magna et Mirabilia from Revelation. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's take a few moments of silence. Now the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. 
Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now the collects. Triune God of love, overwhelming and all-encompassing, visit us in our solitude and in our companionship and draw us ever more deeply into union with you who are ever present and ever mysterious, that we, like your servant Adavik, might know you ever more fully even as we have been fully known. Amen. And grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who celebrate with awe the Paschal Feast may be found worthy to attain to everlasting joys through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Saviour, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. And now in, our, in the silence that follows, let us bring to God our own prayer needs and thanksgivings and our concerns for the world, the church and creation and for climate change and for all the people and places and situations that are in our hearts and minds at this time. Remembering those who are struggling, in need, or in distress. And we pray for the sick in mind and body and the dying. those who have lost loved ones and those who mourn. And those whose relationships have been damaged. Rebuild trust, heal and rebuild so that people are stronger by working together for solutions for the common good. Remembering Adavik and those she influenced, let us thank God for those who have influenced and inspired us and enriched our lives and have drawn us to pray today.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uniting our voices into one, we pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.